Hey everyone, Jeffrey Lin here. I have a good friend of mine on today, Michelle Snyder from Market Gauge. Um, she has a lot of responsibilities there, but she's basically the main honcho with her husband Keith over there at uh, Market Gauge. So um, I'd like to ask you, Michelle, what exactly is it that you guys do? Okay, well, Mar Market Gauge has evolved from inventions of proprietary stock selection tools that were originally just available to institutional event, um, investors and now are consumer based and so with the switch from institutional to customer base we also employed a lot of courses because we found that we needed not only education for people on how to use our specific tools but even on trading strategies and since among Jeff Bish who's also a partner Keith and myself we have over 50 years of trading, we have really figured out how to keep ourselves as traders first, but yet offer the education and, of course, the tools which were originally put together for our own trading. Mm -hmm. Let's go back a little and start with how you have actually got into the whole trading business and we'll build up to why you're starting to teach now and what you've learned over the years because um, – a lot of people probably go through the same processes that all of us do when we're trying to learn. Well, I'll tell you, my, my, my start was very interesting because I grew up and became a teacher. I have a master's in special education. So back in the day, I was teaching school. And at the time, the New York Yankees were in the World Series. And I was living in my walk-up apartment in Manhattan, teaching school. And I got a knock on my door right during the game from a neighbor who was looking to borrow something. And so I answered the door, and it was this very attractive woman, and we became friends. And she worked for Merrill Lynch as a floor analyst in coffee, sugar, and cocoa. So she asked me if I wanted to come down to see what she did. And I went down there, and it was just one of those light bulb moments I had no experience at all in business. I had never really taken any finance courses. Some members of my family were involved in finance, but it wasn't anything in my immediate family. And so I became completely obsessed with the idea of getting a job on the floor. And so I sort of went a circuitous route. I became uh, working for this company called Commodity World Advertising that did market research for commodity rags, basically. And in the process of trying to get some increased membership for one particular rag, which was a British newspaper, I got to interview the directors of research of a lot of different commodity firms. And so I finally met with the guy at that time who was the director of research for Conti Commodities. And after I finished my market research project, I called him and I said, you looking for anybody? I'd love to get involved in the business. I'll do anything. I'll clerk. I'll do anything. And amazingly, they hired me to become a floor analyst in coffee, sugar, and cocoa. Right away? So they, right away. And it was one of these things where they flew me to Chicago to meet with the big wigs there. And at that point, I'd already been hired. And they said, oh, you know, you fell through the cracks. You've just won the lottery. And, you know, at that point, when you're young, like yourself, you know, you're just sort of fearless. And I was like, okay, bring it on. So I went down to the floor and um, essentially was talking on a squawk box to all of the brokers of Conti Commodities about what was going on in coffee, sugar, and cocoa. And so it was a crash course. And, well, did um, you know what was going on with coffee and cocoa and sugar? Not, not, not originally. I mean, at the, actually, quite honestly, at that point, all I knew about coffee, sugar, and cocoa was that I enjoyed all three <laughs> daily. And so I had no idea about futures. And... It was, you know, like I said, it was a crash course, and yet because I had a, a tremendous amount of pride and never wanted to look foolish on the squawk box, I worked tirelessly to learn everything I could as quickly as I could. And I was extremely fortunate because the people on the floor were incredibly forthcoming in helping me. And so I would run over to a couple of the brokers, and I'd say, and I with my piece of paper and pencil, what's going on, who's buying, who's selling, what are the stops? And within a very short period of time, I, I just got it. It was it was like I was sort of born to do this, but I didn't know that I was born to do it until I was actually doing it. And then to make things even more incredible, they needed a broker, Conti Commodities needed a broker in coffee, sugar, and cocoa, and so they gave me a seat. 
So within six months now, I had a badge. And so now I was in the pit actually executing some orders for Conti. Also, I was trading my own account. And so one of the things I love to say about the commodities exchange back in those days is that I think it's the purest form of capitalism because, you know, basically a po' girl like me from the boroughs in Manhattan was able to borrow money to start a trading account and go on to have a very successful career. So it was fantastic. But I was lucky. I mean, not everybody is so lucky to be able to get their education on the floor and I was surrounded by the best traders in the world. I became friends with Mark Fisher, who taught me a lot. Alan Lotteman was a gentleman who was the technical guru at that time, who taught me point and figure charts. I was working around Paul Tudor Jones, Steve Sullivan. And so you ju I just became an observer uh, and, and absorbed everything I possibly could and asked a ton of questions. And then after, uh, I guess it was two years I was on the exchange there, and I decided to go over to Comex because the metals were heating up and well, coffee explain sugar... Explain to people what Comex is first. I'm sorry? Explain to people what Comex is first. Oh, that's, that's the, the gold and uh, silver copper. That's the metals exchange. So, um, and, and, and so I went from trading the, the, the cash crops to now trading the, the, the futures in gold and silver. And so it was a whole new education, but at that point I was hired as a chartist because I had become known now as a good point in figure chartist, mm -hmm. which really ties into what I'm doing now, except that instead of keeping manual point and figure charts, of course, with technology, it's been so easy to do it in multiple time frames on the computer, but the same principles apply. So I went to work at Comex, and it was that was a great two-year run. I made a lot of money. I didn't actually have a seat, but I was working outside the ring with a couple of the traders there. And then decided I wanted to go over to NYMEX, which is the mercantile exchange where crude oil, heating oil, and natural gas is traded. And so I basically stepped back again because I took a job as a, as a phone clerk. And again, realized that I needed to get an education to see what the personality of the NYMEX market was. And that was starting to heat up. Well, was and it so, just because the, the exchanges were, were different or was it the actual trading that you had to educate yourself on? Well, you know, the personality of every market is different, just like the personality of every stock is different. And so... I wanted to understand more about the fundamentals of how, you know, in terms of the seasonality, mm -hmm. COMEX worked versus heating oil. I mean, now I was back to trading something that was more of a cash, I won't say crop, but certainly a, a cash commodity. Right. And, um, and also I wanted to understand who the players were. I really didn't know anything about heating oil or, or, or natural gas or crude oil. And I wanted to see how that market moved. Now, in terms of technical patterns, yes, those are universal. In terms of psychology of traders, that's universal. But, you know, I always wanted to go in with as much pre-education. And being a phone clerk, by the way, is at that time was a fantastic experience because well, I was so on the phone. Information flowing through you on both sides, right? Oh, absolutely. I mean, you know, literally, I must have hopped up and down off of a stool a thousand times a day. It was also a good way to stay thin. <laughs> and so I have two phones hanging from my ear, and I'd be on the phone taking orders, also telling the people on the phone what was going on, running out to my broker, screaming, the, you know, what, buy this, sell that. Mm -hmm. And within, I'd say, about six months of doing that, I was ready to get a seat there. And so I got a seat, and I became a local. And so I was th at that point and from there on in done with actual order execution and I was just now trading from my own account. Just on a vacation far away.